Mm-hmm. So what this is doing is within this um, these quotation marks is the command that I want to run in PowerShell. First, it uh, invokes a web request to to this IP and port and gets um, the amzy dot ps one. Okay. First, bypassing the yes. First, MC. bypassing the amzy. Okay. And invoke expression is just it just running the PowerShell script. and it does the same with this new powershell script that we made okay so this powershell script what it has been doing is it just loads the assembly into the memory mm. and it creates a function where we can call a function from that assembly oh, okay got right? it so after after that like after this has finished i just invoke that i just use that function mm. to run something correct So that was for Rubis. We can do the same for tools like Certify, for Whisper, for any ah, .NET okay. production, right? Uh, we can't do the same for Mimikatz mm. because Mimikatz is not a .NET. Uh, mm. .NET. Probably a C binary. Yeah, it's a C binary. But we, I also have a solution for that. Mm, okay. um, so this is the invoke Mimikatz. Um, the PowerShell version. Yeah, the PowerShell version. Uh, it just it, it has the embedded binaries in it. I think the way they are. Uh, I think they were here somewhere. I don't remember, mm-hmm. but uh, this has the uh, embedded binaries inside of it. This is highly signature. If you write invoke mimikatz and this is not even <laughs> loaded, Windows yeah. Defender still does not like that. Yeah. Right. So what I what I'm gonna do with this is because I I want this to run. This is the command that I want to run, right? I want to dump the sam and get through mm, with okay. ls, right? Okay. So I'll change the name. Let's not keep it in both mini cats. Let's make it happy puppy. <laughs> the invocation. Change that too. Okay. Uh, now I'll use something called um, invoke obfuscation. It's mm-hmm. another great tool. It's it's a very old tool. I am still surprised how this works right out of the box. Okay. Again, a obfuscator tool. Yeah, it's a. Ah, uh, I call it obfuscation. Um, the thing with this is, it lets you pick how you exactly want to obfuscate. So you can obfuscate the same PowerShell script mm-hmm. in multiple ways. It will have multiple different signatures. Ah, okay. Right. Um. So this was. Okay. I'll just do a simple token obfuscation. No, this will take a little while. Uh, what this does is it creates PowerShell equivalence. So, like there's a there's a line which might be heavily signature. This will break apart that line into different parts. It will arrange them in different orders. Mm. It will encode them in different ways. So currently, it just takes tokens and um, changes the order in which they are present. But you can do a lot with this tool. It's it's great, and the fact that it works out of the box with Mimi Cats, at least for now, hmm. is is amazing. I think because of the amount of obfuscation it's doing, I think Microsoft will not be able to catch it based on the signatures it is producing for these binaries or for these scripts. Yeah, I think that is the reason. Yes, it still performs the same functions that Mimi Cats is supposed to do. Right, oh, so right. so an EDR which has hooks on mm. all the DLLs that will catch this in no time. But mm. this works right now in Defender, so mm. so that's great for us right now. Right, I think based on the commands, variables, members, arguments, strings, basically everything that is in there the code. Yeah, I'll I'll show you the difference. Mm. Um, like this, this is the this is invoke Mimikatz, mm. right? Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure it's going to be looking 
uh these are the ones uh okay so this is how it looks right now and it looks like readable code mm. right you can go through this and you know picture or piece together how things are looking how it works and what not uh what what this is doing is it's mangling that code so much that the script interpreter will have to dynamically figure mm. out what's actually happening mm. right so let uh, me pass it to you let's put this into this is actually let me open it in the same uh, editor yeah so this is how the new file looks mm, totally different yes you can look at this stuff mm. and understand that this was supposed to say current domain right yeah. but a script interpreter can statically not tell that mm, right right and everything gets reordered all these um, braces right here are just reordering what's um, you know suffixed yeah, it, yeah okay okay or is it uh, talking about the position there like on the first position yeah exactly right, right? so it's just changing the order oh, okay. so there's a string there mm. and there's um, this is the order yeah that's the order in which mm. you have to reconstruct that string okay. before passing it on to something that's mm. you know yeah. that's how it's uh building building it's building the whole script mm, essentially yeah. uh, during run time yeah interesting and even the invocation that i wrote this is how it looks now mm. so now some of even i things, think that uh, uh, binaries are also changed there yeah even the binaries are reordered mm. and it's been broken into thousands of pieces <laughs> right, right? <laughs> uh, the invocation is something I'm a little worried about okay because it has the strings still uh, okay, still there, not right uh, uh, but let's see let's see if this works if it doesn't we'll manually get this again okay right it uh, does it doesn't matter mm. so let's head to our virtual machine What was it? You know, happy puppy, right? Yeah. So again, an AMZ bypass is required. Yeah. And this and takes a long, long while because yeah. the whole script is being rebuilt. Yep. But it's worth it. Like if you get to <laughs> if you get to dump some domain credentials hmm. without yeah. the antivirus even getting a hint of it, that's yeah. great. Um, this will definitely um, be reflected in the PowerShell history. Ah, uh, correct. And if script blocking is uh, logging is there, hmm. so you would you might need to bypass that in a different way. Hmm. But in case you're not worried about those, you can run this as is. Ah, uh, right. Right. And I hope this works. This was working when I was <laughs> testing it today morning. Yeah, again it's uh, it happens. It's a it's a cat. Again, yeah, uh, evading antiviruses, EDRs, uh, it's uh, lots of uh, you know trial and error. So as you can see, yeah. right, the domain credentials and, of the users, mm. the hashes, um, even the see, this is a domain <laughs> controller. Uh, so yeah. the TRV, DGT, mm. the administrator, the whole domain is gone. Mm, yeah. the sam hashes so it was able to do all of that windows defender could not pick up on this and the best thing is that those binaries that we loaded right now not mm. loaded but essentially imported mm. they're gone mm. they don't uh, exist on the system anymore so there is no trace there is no trace of them so even if like if some um, you know malware analyst got a hold of the script mm. they will be able to piece together mm. that this is exactly what happened uh, but, but defender will not stop ah uh, okay right so that is something and the time they are going to do that between that we already have the credentials as you can see yes so we we can <laughs> maintain persistence yeah. in various ways yeah. right perfect